Welcome everyone to another edition of Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below so you don't miss any of our future content. Today is part three of our DOF Reality H6 motion simulator build series. Today we're going to talk about how we put together the base unit and some of the tips and tricks that we used while doing it. So stick around if you want to see how it was done. Now I want to start off by saying you should always follow the manufacturer's instructions when assembling something as complicated as a motion simulator. I'm going to share with you some of the enhancements that we made. Uh, they worked for us, but at the end of the day you have to decide if these adjustments and enhancements are right for you when you build your unit. Now, I have to tell you, make sure you go over to the Facebook group DOF Reality Builders. That group is amazing. A lot of these mods came from there when I scoured the website trying to figure out what I should do when I got this unit. And also Motion Sim Builders, another Facebook group that I highly recommend you look into. So let's share with you some of the things that we did. Okay, I wanna start off talking about the power requirements of the H6. Now the instruction manual recommends that US customers use two separate outlets for the H6 system. Otherwise, you very likely will throw a breaker in your house. Now, I wanted to show you the setup that we have. Even though this looks like we have both of these boxes plugged into a single outlet, that's not the case. We actually brought in someone that does a lot of electrical work, and he custom wired this outlet specifically for this H6 unit. Each of these plugs is on a separate circuit. They both go to the switch on the wall, and then each one goes to a separate 20 amp breaker in the actual fuse box of the house. So even though this looks like a standard plug and, and I've got them both plugged in the same outlet, I don't want you to be fooled. Uh, you will typically need to plug those into separate outlets. We just have a special case here. Now the first thing I highly recommend is getting some rubber gasket material or neoprene sheets and placing that between all the metal pieces on the uh, simulator. That'll really quiet it down. Now I can't tell you how much it quieted mine down because we put it in from the very beginning. But what I can tell you is this thing's rock solid and really quiet when it runs. The only noise I get from it is from the butt kicker. Now I didn't put any of the rubber material between the butt kicker mount and this frame. That's the only place I didn't put it because obviously you want that vibration to come through the whole sim rig. Also, highly, highly recommend getting some washers. These are fender washers. So these are basically uh, 5 16 inner hole, one and a half inch wide. And then there's some other kind that are basically either a 5 16 or a 3 8 inner hole and an inch wide. And these are really important because the metal on the uh, H6 is built to be light because it's being moved around, which consequently means it's thinner. So it's very easy to bend some of the components or some of the metal on the simulator if you over tighten the bolts. When you take a washer and you put that there, it actually helps spread the load out so it's less likely to bend. So I highly, highly recommend getting fender washers um, and using those when you put the build together. Now you're probably going to want to use some paint because you probably don't want them just to be silver. So this is fusion texture paint. And if you do this right, you can make it look just like the powder coating on the actual simulator itself. So it depends on how you spray it, how far away you are, but you can get it to look very, very similar to the original finish. So highly recommend you grab some of this. Okay, so if you're gonna add all this gasket material and all these washers, you're obviously gonna need longer bolts. Now, I will warn you, I don't recommend using stainless steel bolts. They might be a little cheaper and they might be a little shinier, but they're nowhere near as strong as the bolts that come with this system. I recommend you get at least a 10.9 or even 12.9 grade bolts, uh, steel bolts that are hardened. What I got here are uh, some M8s that we used, and what you're gonna look for typically is a bolt that's somewhere between five millimeters and 10 millimeters longer than the bolts that are in the assembly instructions. Uh, depends on how thick the gasket and all that stuff is, so use your own judgment on that. But typically what I found was anywhere from five 
to 10 millimeters longer bolts. Also, when you order bolts, make sure you check and make sure the thread uh, length. So some bolts don't have threads all the way up. And so if you actually ended up needing a shorter bolt and you were just going to cut it off, if you don't have threads all the way up, you're not going to have anything that you can use the bolt for. Now, I would recommend you get the exact same size thread, uh, the metric and all that good stuff. Uh, these, for example, are M8s and they're metric 8, uh, 100 millimeters, because then you can still utilize your nylock and your uh, other materials that came with your simulator. Another thing we did use a little bit of are these nylon washers. Um, didn't use them nearly as much as we thought we would, but they worked really good for spacers. So um, I wouldn't say you have to have these, but if you're looking for something to kind of take up some space or use on the bolts, this isn't a terrible thing to have and it wasn't super expensive, but I wouldn't say it's needed. Now, all those things I just mentioned, I've got in affiliate links in the descriptions below. If you order them on Amazon, it won't cost you anything additional and it really helps our channel out. Now you're going to hear me refer to things as the spine and the cradle. And when I say those things, I'm simply talking about the cradle here, which is the part that the control arms and the gas struts hook to to move everything. And then the spine is the center section that you use to mount all the other components to. So one of the modifications that we did was we added sleeves to both the cradle and the spine. And a sleeve is basically just a bushing that goes in uh, between the holes and it gives it more strength when you tighten it down and helps keep it from deforming the metal. Highly recommend this modification. It lets you cinch everything up, especially in the cradle where it's very important that everything stay tight. All right, I need to take a moment here to introduce Daryl Delac, my master fabricator. Daryl was the one that actually made all the custom pieces for the H6 unit that we used. I would share with him my vision and he turned it into a reality. So and I couldn't have done this without him. So we talked about the need to add fender washers to the build and I'm going to show you an example of how we did that here. Now as you can see here is part of the cradle and then this is the back of the spine that we talked about and we have sleeves in here to add to the stability of this. So it allows us to take this bolt that's right here that goes all the way through and really put some pressure on there and tighten it really strongly. You can also see here, that's a piece of that neoprene that's between that whole piece right there. Um, the fender washers, these are the one and a half inch, and what I did was trim them just because I like the clean look of that. But that really helps distribute that load of that bolt uh, being tight, it helps kind of spread that out. So that's one place where we recommend using the fender washers. And since we just mentioned the neoprene gasket, let's talk a little bit about that. So when you are actually cutting the gaskets out, if you'll use a paper punch, that'll give you a perfect hole in the gasket material to fit the bolts through. And another tip, when you go to tighten the bolt, make sure you hold the bolt itself steady and tighten the nut. That'll keep the bolt from turning in the neoprene and tearing it up. I want to share with you another little trick that I learned from my racing days. You'll notice that what we've done is after everything's tight, we've got a line that we just drew with a Sharpie straight across both the nut and the bolt. And what that lets you do is you can visually inspect to make sure that that nut is not coming loose. All you got to do is look and see, and as long as that line's still together, those nuts and bolts are as tight as they were when you did them. Now if you see that move and that line is offset a little bit, that means you've got a problem and something's coming loose and you need to address that. So there's another key area where I highly recommend using fender washers. It seems like the majority of the DOF units that I see online always have dents on these bolts here and here where they've over tightened them and deformed the metal. So as you can see we've added the one inch fender washers there to help spread that load and keep it from denting as easily. Now when you have a bolt that's typically on an edge like this that shoulder will give it a little more strength. You still don't want to over tighten it but it's not as critical to have a washer there because you're right on the edge and then when you have a frame like this where you can see this is a bracket and you can see the neoprene right in there um, you don't need a washer here either because essentially this 
bracket right here is acting as a washer when you tighten that up. Let's talk a little bit about the seat that we chose. We picked the King DX Racer. It's a little bit larger seat than you typically find on one of these simulators, but I like to be comfortable when I'm playing. So under here you can see the slider that basically allows us to move the seat forward and back. And we had to do a lot of work to get this to all fit together. And what we ended up doing was going to the local hardware store and getting one and a half inch flat steel stock and just customizing a bracket that would work with both the slider and the seat. And one of the challenges that we really faced was I was adamant about having armrests on my chair because I use these a lot when I'm uh, in a flight simulator to kind of pull myself around in VR to look around. So I really like having the armrests there. So we had to do some special modifications here to make like some recessed bolts where they'd fit under and countersink here and all those kinds of things. So it is possible if you're willing to put the work in. All right, so I want to share with you one of the other mods that we did that really helped the stability of our HOTAS system. So several years ago, I actually purchased this Next Level Racing wheel stand, and the version I bought actually included the flight pack, so it was the flying variant of it. And we thought we could incorporate some of the pieces from this into the DOF Reality H6. So the key components were this little piece right here, this is the piece that goes under the seat. And then you have these angle brackets here. And because we actually had one that came with the racing stand itself, and then we got a second one that came with the flight pack, we actually had one for the left and right side of the sim. So the key parts we used in addition to that were we used this shifter bracket, which we used that as a foundation to the HOTAS. Uh, we use this plate to actually mount the warthog on top of it. And so in total, we used about five pieces out of all of this. And all we did was basically install it the same way that they do it on their next level uh, setup. And as you can see here, you take that bar, goes under the seat, and then you have your angle brackets that go in and your plates that go on top. So let me show you how we incorporated that onto the DOF reality system. So here are all those components that we just showed you. And as you can see here, this is the main bar that goes under the seat. It goes to both sides. And then you have the angle brackets that come up and give us a almost perfect mounting point. It fit perfectly with the cradle and a custom bracket that we did that I'll show you that made everything tie together and it was very, very solid. So here's another angle of that next level bracket that we added. It goes under the seat and then comes up at an angle. And what that allowed us to do again is to use this angle bracket and then come forward and actually use the cradle arm for stability. And right here we have a piece of angle iron that we just made a custom bracket for. And I'll show you that here on an insert. But that really gives us all the stability in our peripherals. So one other modification that we made was adding these little fish tank stickers to each motor. They're basically temperature sender strips and they allow you to see how hot the motors are getting at a glance. Now, in practice, they generally don't ever look different than this, but we have seen a little bit of red come up on them, like if we have a light child that's driving a simulator or something, we'll see just a little bit of red show up. The nice thing is these things on their top temperature, if you ever see the whole thing red, that's when you're getting into a danger zone for damaging the motors. One other change that we made from the stock configuration of the simulator was we reversed these two arms and which one sat forward and which one sat back. And that was simply to give us a little more room since we knew we were getting in and out right here. We wanted those little couple extra inches here to be able to squeeze in. And it just makes getting into the simulator a little easier as well as getting back out. And it works pretty good. Now there is one part of the build that I do want to warn you about and it's this steering plate here. One thing DOF does not do, and I'm not sure why, is they don't countersink some of the holes 
even though the bolts they supply are countersunk bolts. So just know you may have to do some countersinking to this plate if you're going to use the stock steering plate and arms. So that'll wrap it up for part three of our DOF Reality H6 Motion Simulator Builder Series. I hope you found it informative and I hope you enjoyed it. In part four, we're going to talk a little bit about the peripherals on this system, how we installed them and attached them. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, remember to get your game on.